Hey everybody, it's Michelle Lavore and Devin Lavore coming, coming at, at you. And we're so glad that you're here. <laughs> Today we are going to be going over Genesis chapter 1, verse 23, mm -hmm. um, as we continue our journey through Genesis chapter 1 and the creation story. Uh -huh. um, but before we begin, as always, we want to give a huge thank you to everyone who has continued to give to us and does give to us. Um, it is just truly a out. Yeah, blessing <laughs> from the out. Lord. <laughs> and um, so thank you so much. And mm -hmm. Um, also, we are support based, so if you would like to give to us, you can. We have a PayPal link below, and you can just click it. My brain went blank for like half a second, and I was like, oh. That's called a brain. Anyway. But yeah, so you want to just go ahead and yeah, so, dive on? Yeah, so. All it. right, so let, let's just do this, mm -hmm. shall we? Uh, it's Genesis 1 23, and it says this very, very profound thing. Brace yourselves. And there was evening and there was morning, mm -hmm. a fifth day. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, I think I picked up on a pattern here that the Lord has been doing with these. And there was evening and there was morning, a second, third, fourth, fifth day. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like the Lord on those days, I haven't been doing it on purpose. Obviously, I'm just coming to sit before the feet of Jesus and say, what's going on? I'm just going to write down what do you have to say. On each of those days, he's had me focus on the the nature of that number. It mm -hmm. always, it just comes out. You know, whether you get a download or an impression or God literally speaks a word to you or whatever it is, on this day is the same thing. And the Lord began talking to me about the power of God. It was. It's almost like the Lord will create, 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 and then, on, and there was evening and there was morning. It's almost like there's a little Sabbath moment inserted well, in there. Well, it's funny you know what I mean? I was just thinking, like, if you read it, it could be, and there was revelation and there was wisdom. Yeah, exactly. Like, like those days, he's like, let me just give you some revelation and wisdom. Well, it's almost like, <laughs> let's just sit back and just look at what we did on this day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, come on, let's go to the sixth day. You yeah. know what I mean? Or whatever the next day is. You know, and I just felt that from the Lord. It was, and, and the thing that he was sharing with me was, it is the power of God that brings life. Mm -hmm. It is the power of God that created everything. It's like, it's like, and there was evening, there was morning, a fifth day. Man, look at, look at what the power of God did. The mm -hmm. power of God does. And it's funny because this is Genesis 1, 23, and we're doing this every day is a verse. Mm -hmm. So this is day 23, and, day, and 23 has a lot to do with life and uh resurrection of course it has a lot to do with death too i get it the, the death is definitely a number but it's like but it's like the resurrection shows power over death mm -hmm. you know and that's what this whole genesis restoration story is about power over sin power over death power over everything you know that um that comes against us or God has power over all things. There's nothing that's more powerful than him, you know? And so Zechariah 4, 6, that talks about not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. And that power that it's talking about there is just, it's like a human power. It's physical strength, you know? Mm -hmm. Psalm 20, verse 7, some trust in horses, others trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name mm -hmm. of the Lord our God, meaning another earthly power human ability you know and it's like the spirit of god is the ultimate power and the word of god is the ultimate power that's above those things okay um and in second chronicles 20 verse 12 um that says lord we don't know what to do but our eyes are upon you right and that's kind of just looking to god who's like you have the power to deliver us from anything and everything you know, so it's like as we continue, well, I guess as we continue, I guess as we continue through this next phase of the kingly story that God's going to be doing in our life, we just have to make sure we're always looking to God for the answer, mm -hmm. not to ourselves, or our own power, or our own ability. You know, a lot of times, you know, you get the money, for example, to buy a certain thing. You could buy it, but should you? You know what I'm saying? And if there's if there's some sort of something inside of you that says you may you shouldn't do that, then don't do it. Or maybe you don't have the money 
to, to get something. You may only have a hundred dollars and the Lord's like, buy that thing right there. And it's 90 bucks. <laughs> You're just like, uh, you see what I'm saying? We live mm -hmm. by the spirit and that spirit is above our human power and our human ability. Mm -hmm. And it just, when you, we got to just be looking to the Lord in all things. You know, when God blesses a person, that's when he tends to lose the person. That's why he said in Deuteronomy, don't forget me. You know, mm -hmm. please remember me because you're about, you about to get blessed. Woo mm -hmm. And when you get blessed, it's easy, you know, to have some sort of tragedy happen and, uh, and everybody's flooding the church buildings, mm -hmm. you know, because everyone's looking to God then. And it's like the Lord, he has trouble getting people to look to him during times of prosperity and growth and just woohoo, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of times that's when some of the greatest revivals happen, though. They weren't during times of poverty. They were during times of great prosperity, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and I believe we're getting ready to see another one just like that. And we're going to see a time of great prosperity. I know it doesn't look like that now, but man, God's on the throne and his power is about to be displayed. He's about to extend his scepter and go, okay, I'm done playing Lord of the Flies. I'm, I'm stepping in, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> and so anyway, yeah, and so God, he's the power. He created all things, right? So, when God, you want to read some, we're just reading notes. They sure. probably want to hear, hear from you every once in a while. It's like, can, can she read? <laughs> yes, yeah, she reads. All right. So it, says, <laughs> <laughs> um, it says, when God steps into a situation, the power of creation has stepped in. Um, ability has stepped in. Come on. Impossibility must go sit back on the bench of life. The Creator is here. Mm -hmm. No matter what we face, we have to know that our Father is the power that will and has overcome everything we will face in life. Yeah, I like that. He, he, he is the power that will and already has and is doing. It's like that uh, who was and is and is to come. God's mm -hmm. already present in the past, present, and future. He's already there, <laughs> you know? Yep. And he's, he's exercising authority over time and space. So, I think he can take care of you. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and it might take a lifetime for us to really believe that. Yeah. <laughs> a thousand demonstrations. <laughs> we'll get it. <laughs> um, and then it says Psalm 20 um, documents a prayer of salvation where he trusts in the power of God. Mm -hmm. um, Psalm 21 is then a song of praise where David rejoices over the fulfillment of God's word and the display of his great power to do the impossible, overcoming circumstances and adversaries. Mm -hmm. And in the last verse says, Be exalted, Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. Yeah. I really like that because Psalm 20 really was kind of like a, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Like, mm -hmm. oh, Lord, send help from the sanctuary. We, we've lived Psalm 20 mm -hmm. for the past <laughs> four years, <Yeah. laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But then it's like we're just constantly praying for that Psalm 21, you know, oh, we will rejoice in your strength because you have delivered us and you have not withheld the request of our lips. That's a 212 for us for a yeah. while there. Sometimes it means different things. Man, we haven't got a 212 in a while, have we? Yeah. Anyway, but it's a Psalm 21 verse 2. It's like you're gonna, you, you've you done it. You've crowned me. You've blessed me through your, you, your, your mercy has just saved me and delivered me. And just like, and that's what... I think that's what he was writing after when he realized, wow, God is setting me on this throne here. This is amazing. I, I'm, I feel a song coming on. And the Lord has like saved you from your enemies and just like, oh, that's the same. Uh, Psalm 21 is the same one where it talks about he will put his divine bow of justice at his enemy's face. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you really want to know the Lord? Mm. <laughs> Can you imagine? Peaceful, nice, kindly Jesus puts a bow, like he pulls it back and puts it right in your face and say, now what did you have to say to me? What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know? But then, um, but then in the end, he says, we will praise your power because it's your power that mm -hmm. did all of this. Yeah. Like I was back in Ziklag crying because life was just not good. My village has been raided. All my stuff's been taken. The men who are with me, their stuff was taken. And now they're trying to take my life. Mm -hmm. That was me literally a week ago, you know, mm -hmm. and now look at me like what in the world? Just what? What? You chose that moment to fulfill the word right then? Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, of all the moments. 
to fulfill a prophetic word. You choose like the worst moment, the worst human moment possible. You're like, oh, I think I'll do it right then. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, but but what you don't realize, I had planned it the whole time anyway. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> It's like right then. It's like, wow. And so that's where Psalm 21 comes out of. Yep. You know, it's talking about the power of God. You know, um, you want me to read the next paragraph? Or have I been talking too much already? <laughs> no, you, oh, you can go ahead. Okay, it says the fifth <laughs> letter of the Hebrew alphabet is hey. A lot hey. <laughs> has to be said about <laughs> the meaning of the number five. But consider the changing of the names of Abram and Sarai. God put hey in their names, changing them to what we know, Abraham and Sarah. God changed their names by putting a stamp of his power on them. Mm -hmm. He is saying there that their very names would invoke memories and testimonies of the great power of God, and that they themselves would know the power of God in his great favor towards them. So see, again, it's another one of those like, I can. I have the power to resurrect day twenty-three, number twenty-three. I have the power to resurrect a dead womb. Mm-hmm. I, I can put a baby in there and it'll grow healthy and be alive. I can put my promise at any moment, anywhere I want, and I have the power to make it grow right where I put it. Mm-hmm. Mm, woo! I feel the Lord on that one. I have the power. To be able to make it grow right where I put it. I don't know. For me personally, the reason it hits me so heavy is because it makes me think of our life. These past three and a half years and I'm stressing out and freaking out all the time about finances. And I'm just like, Lord, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, this is the most craziest thing ever. And God's like, you don't even realize I'm putting you in the center of my glory. Mm -hmm. I am calling you. Can I just say this? If, if, it's, if it doesn't work out, I'll edit it out. But <laughs> I'm going to place you, a family of six, inside the, in the top ten counties, the top ten most expensive counties to live in the United States. Mm-hmm. We live in one of the top ten. He said, I'm going to put you right there. And I'm just cause you to grow. I'm not just going to get you to survive. I'm going to get you to grow, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's just like when you're in it, you don't realize you're in it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, because this is not what the glory of God looks like until you grow up enough to realize, wow, look at the glory of God revealed. Mm-hmm. Like we're in the top 10 most expensive places to live. And you know, the Lord's called us here. He's like, well, it's like, because I want you to be in a crazy, ridiculous, impossible situation so you can see my power. You can see my glory. You can see my ability to just send help from the sanctuary. Like Psalm 20 verse 2 talks mm-hmm. about what David was praying for. He's like, I'm just like, I'm like, wow. And he's like, now listen, this is what you're going to have to endure. You're going to have to endure some years going through this. Because the longer I keep you there, the greater the amount of, the, greater the amount of glory I'm going to receive from it. But Lord, don't keep us here too long. Thank you very much. <laughs> But no, God has a, obviously has a time frame mm-hmm. for his promise and everything. But just even in the midst of that, it's like, it's like, that's why he changed the name to Abraham and Sarah. Cause it's like, I'm putting, I'm putting my very power in your name. I want to change your name from Abram, the guy who tried in his own power and his own mm-hmm. strength with his own chariots and his own horses to try to get the promise going. Let, let's see how that work out for you. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, Abraham. The one who has the power of God mm-hmm. in the center of his name, in the center of his heart, that's who's going to receive mm-hmm. the promise. That's mm-hmm. who's going to, mm, man, I don't know if we, we'll be able to finish this video today. because. <laughs> but anyway, because um, we only have a limited amount of time to do this video. But, but seriously, like, and even Sarah, Sarah is the one who gave birth to the promise. You know, not Sarai. Wasn't it Sarai? It was who, her idea. Who, who, that was her idea. Mm-hmm. That, that, this, was, this was an Adam and Eve moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, oh, here's taste of this fruit of this idea I have. And Abraham's like, oh, if that's what you want, okay. Yeah, maybe that is the way it will happen. I don't know. Yeah. It's just like, no. You know, mm-hmm. so both of them had their play in that. 
And God's like, that's, you know, and I'm going to change both your names and both of you will have a play in the promise, obviously. Because mm-hmm. Sarah's got to be the one This is like, he can resurrect a dead womb and put a baby in it mm-hmm. and just put the promise in it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you might as well go ahead and keep reading. All right. So it says, <laughs> so it is the power of God that accomplishes the great things he wants to do. Thus, we must look to him at all times. You like my thus? Yeah. I, I like that word. Thus. thus. <laughs> Therefore. <laughs> and when we do, we will be encouraged. Our faith will lean towards him. Much like plants, when the sun is shining, they lean towards that sunlight. For in the sun, there is life and vitality. When we look to the Lord, we will find life. Even if all we feel is darkness, Mm, we will know that the darkness is temporary. But God, God, his word, (laughs) his spirit, and his power to perform is eternal. But God. Mm-hmm. That, was a, that was super popular like back in what 2018 or something people yeah. kept coming up with you know but God I think it was in the spirit mm-hmm. and God was just but God it's like it's like this is an impossible situation but God has now stepped in mm-hmm. but God's gonna be in there you know and so so I think that's really the gist of of the message today the Lord wants us to kind of have a sail out moment just like mm-hmm. wow look at it's the power of God that's gonna do everything mm-hmm. so so how much can you really just rest in that? Yeah. You can just rest in him just knowing mm-hmm. like he's got it. He's got a plan. All he needs you to do is follow. When you do an Abram and Sarai situation, it just kind of messes up things. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like don't do that. Don't don't be birthing no Ishmaels, you know. Um but you know, God and the funny thing is God had a, a plan for Hagar and Ishmael, even them. He's like, "Well, I'm not going to no, it wasn't. That wasn't my plan. But I don't plan on forsaking even you. I'm not yeah. gonna do that. That's that's not mm-hmm. right, you know. And so, so just be be encouraged today that yeah. uh, the power of God is gonna perform it all. So that really is all that we have for you guys today. It's a little bit of a, a shorter word. Er, I like er. the er. <laughs> er. But just know that yeah, God, it is by his power that he's going to bring forth the promises. And it doesn't matter how long you've been waiting or how big the promise is, that God is just saying, like, it is by my power and my strength and my spirit that I will send forth and accomplish for you what I have promised. Yep. And so we just continue to wait. We continue to just hope and believe the Lord mm. for everything that he has spoken. Yeah. So until tomorrow, guys, we will see you later. Until day 24. <laughs> Bye-bye, guys. Bye.